Hey everybody, um, back out here in uh, the RV uh, I mentioned that I was heading back out to this week. So, just got an email, got it about seven hours ago. I don't know if other people got it earlier or not, but uh, as you can see it here on the screen, if you are receiving this email, you are currently on the wait list for Starlink in your area. We are launching additional satellites as quickly as possible as we can to expand network capacity in your region and we'll fill your order as soon as possible standard thing in the meantime we were now we are now offering starlink for rvs at any destination where starlink provides active coverage currently there's no wait list all orders will be shipped shortly after the order is placed including to wait list areas on the starlink availability map you can pause or and unpause service at any time which is pretty cool um i think the normal service that people have now it's sort of a month to month you pay for a full month and then you uh you know you don't if, if you decide to cancel you probably get to the to the end of that period then it cuts off or whatever but but maybe the pause i'll have to check it out but maybe the pause and unpause maybe it'll be sort of prorated so if you say you're only on a trip for say an rv trip for a week or two and then say you're back within at home or back in city coverage you can unpause it maybe it's prorated um, i think the price now is about i think it's it was 99 i think it's like 109 or 110 or something now especially since they turned on the roaming feature now the roaming feature is something that's been out for a little bit longer um before i got this email at least i've been i've, I've seen it for probably about the last three four weeks where you can now roam anywhere within the uh, Starlink availability area without having to, to go in to the Starlink app, change your home address area, and if you were lucky enough, if there were enough quote-unquote slots open within that area, um, then they would approve you or whatever. So this is specifically targeted toward RVers, uh, off-roaders, overlanders, uh, boondockers, van lifers, etc., etc. So it's exciting. It's exciting times. Um, I mean, I'm sort of an old guy, you know. Yeah, the gray. I know I mentioned that the other night, but I remember when this was like truly a sort of a pipe dream. Um, in in the world, there was a system back. I want to say it was around ninety five, ninety six. Uh, it was Bill Gates, and I, I want to say Larry Ellison, and a couple other big billionaire types um, were talking about exactly, exactly this. What's what's happening now with Starlink? Back then, it was called Teledesic, T E L E D E S I C, Teledesic, um, which was going to be at at the time. It was going to be a it was very optimistic, ambitious, and there obviously weren't nearly as many people on the internet um, back in those days. But it was going to be like a low Earth orbit constellation. I think it was 288 low Earth orbit satellites. I mean, I, I believe they're going to be very low Earth orbit and revolving very quickly. But again, and it was probably going to be much along the same principles that, you know, Starlink's doing now. So, um, that was talked about for a while and it was it was very you know again exciting and interesting and and then it just sort of fizzled out um you know funding just sort of dropped and that was really bef it was during the dot-com boom but it was really before the the main part of the boom but i guess it just sort of got lost lost in everything that was going on in that time and then then the crash came a little bit later so um yeah, and it was history, and I, I, there's probably, honestly, if you're even watching this video, I mean, I, I don't have a, a whole lot of <laughs> followers yet, but if you're even one of the few who were around during those days, um, I, I doubt you've heard of it, the Teledesic system. I mean, it was so uh, nerdy. Again, you know, back in those days, I mean, I was just out of high school. I got out of high school in, like, 94. Um and the internet you know if, i mean I, i've been dialing up since gosh the early 1980s mid 1980s uh i had my own bbs system in the 90s which led me to meeting the people who i helped start an internet company with in the mid 1990s and and leading me into where i went in life so the um 
you know, back when I was first getting in, I mean, if, it, if nobody knew what the internet was, they didn't understand dial up, none of that stuff. And everybody's like, oh, you're, you know, big nerd, you know, nobody's ever going to use that stuff and, you know, made fun of and picked on. But yeah, you know, now everybody's doing it. Everybody has a smartphone, a computer. Um, and a lot of attitudes have changed towards me, you know, personally since those days. You know, there was like that, that little nerdy kid in the computer class that knew how to like get into the servers at school and and so I won't go any further than that <laughs> so but no this uh like I said here in the background I'll be switch over to my browser here Oop, wrong one they have a link here Starlink for RVs let's go to that Starlink immediately access high speed low latency internet on an as needed basis at any destination where Starlink provides active coverage. Work and play at remote locations. Starlink for RVs is ideal for customers traveling to locations and then that's some of the coverage so it's pretty good in the US. There's some down in like Brazil and down that way in Argentina. I guess it's Maybe they don't have agreements with other countries around Argentina, but maybe they only activated it for... It's probably geofenced into those areas in South America, as well as being geofenced into Europe. Uh, I guess there's a little bit of African coverage, but Europe and, and, and Northern Europe uh, and the Norwegian areas and, and then Greenland, Iceland, I guess that's all... It, it's probably geofenced because obviously Russia's not in there and uh, doesn't look like... I, I can't really zoom in that well on that map. It looks like Belarus is not on there. Ukraine. Ukraine obviously is. Um, what, what is it's, I guess that's like Belarus and somebody there. I guess Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, Norway, or Finland, Sweden, and Norway. So, yeah. So that's, that's a very wide area. Pretty much most of the quote-unquote civilized world and it's I guess it's lesser in the southern hemisphere I know it's primarily a northern hemisphere service to start that's where most of the satellites are and then uh, they're moving them slowly into the middle and southern hemispheres that's you know part of the reason the coverage probably is is not as good as it is uh, down there but I think that big track down here if you can I don't know if my mouth yeah uh, is showing up or not but down in in the Brazil area in Rio down that way um, and that's probably it might just be like a, a new track of satellites that you know crosses over you know, orbits are weird you know you, you always see in the movies where you know it's sort of going like a sine wave across like a flat map like this flat map um, of the world, so it pro there's probably a certain path that always crosses like through down there. So I don't know. Yeah, pay as you go. Starlink for RVs provides the ability to pause and unpause services at any time and is billed in one. Okay, so it is one month increments. It's not prorated, allowing users to customize their service to their individual travel needs. Easy setup, same as always just like everybody else has already shown. Try a Starlink for RV for 30 days. If not satisfied, get a full refund of the hard hardware cost. So that's cool. I hope a lot of people take advantage of that. You know, there's a lot of RV people I follow that always, uh, that have, some of them haven't even talked about Starlink. I hope they find it. But, uh, but there's a lot of other ones who have talked about it. So I'm hoping they were already on the list and, and are getting the equipment. And, you know, again, I look forward to, seeing people uh, that I watch uh, discover it and set it up. I, I probably will at some point, but I'm not a full-time RVer. Um, as I said in my video the other night, I stay out at a friend's RV while he's out of town. And like I said, that's where I am now. I'm back out here. So um, I was just watching uh, some some TV, and, and then I saw this email come in, the Starlink for RV. So I was sort of excited. I thought I'd make a quick video and, and talk about it. So... But uh, it looks like, again, pretty much standard Starlink service, month to month. You can pause, unpause any time in one month increments. Um, and Which is actually sort of cool because I think before this email came out, I th you could do monthly increments, but I don't think you could pause and unpause. Uh, from what I was 
you know, when I was looking around and everything, you if you if you decided to cancel your service, you had to reestablish like your account, like every, like say 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 you got it for like a month during the summer or two months during the summer, and then you wanted you didn't want to have it, you know, while you were back home or whatever, then you would have to like cancel your service. And then the next time you go out on the RV, you would have to open a new account, hope you got in. But now the pause unpause is cool, so your account's probably going to stay established, and then you can just, you know, reactivate it when you're back out on the road anytime, you know, in one month increments. So that's really awesome. You know, I'm glad uh, they're tailoring this, you know, to to the RV industry and the van lifers and everybody else. So, but I'm not going to keep you long. Um, so just. Again, thought I'd make a quick video on this. It's, a, it's really in my area. You know, the uh, internet and st stuff like that. So, everybody have a good night and peace out. Bye-bye.